So the concept behind In The Buff uh, all came from a, a light bulb moment in the, in the gym one morning uh, before work. I was thinking ahead of what I was going to eat for lunch that day and I knew I'd cooked some healthy food the night before and I would probably reheat that in the, in the microwave when I got to work. But invariably you reheat food like that and it uh, can dry out and need a bit of waking up so I was thinking of what sources I had in the cupboard to, to smother it in to, to bring it back to life. But then a thought struck me that a lot of those condiments aren't necessarily that good for you, um, often quite high in sugar and salt and, and preservatives and, and nasties. So uh, I did a bit of research online for healthier alternatives and then I thought I'm going to search for a protein condiment because um, I was sure there would probably be one. It's a, it's a big market, it's um, something I wanted as part of my fitness regime and my diet, um, but I was amazed that there was nothing out there. So I did a lot of online research and started looking around at um, creating it myself. My background actually isn't in the food industry. Uh, I have a digital and creative background, um, but I do the cooking at home. That's, uh, that's my deal with the, with the wife and with the family. Um, so I've always enjoyed cooking and experimenting with lots of different flavors and tastes from around the world. And also we try and put together a weekly meal plan for the family, for my wife and my, ki and my kids, um, that's healthy um, and not always meat-based, some plant-based options as well. Um, so my background from a personal point of view enabled me to create the recipes and from a creative kind of industry um, point of view enabled me to, to assist with the creative side of things with the brand and with the social media and, and the marketing side. The kitchen element uh, was literally me in the small kitchen at home. Uh, I had my iPad on a, on a window ledge. I'm researching plant-based sources of protein and flavors that go well together and other kind of source recipes that, that work uh, to get the basis of, of what a good sauce, what a good ketchup is. Um, but I really wanted to do something different with the flavors and I wanted to include herbs and spices that have uh, health benefits as well. Um, I, I decided from the outset I didn't want to do a tomato ketchup, a barbecue and a, and a brown sauce for example. I wanted to do something a bit more groundbreaking because the product is more groundbreaking. So we, I went with the initial flavor uh, that I first created was the sweet paprika flavor. So a bit of a tomato base, lots of paprika in there and a bit of cayenne pepper for a bit of ting, um, but no nasty anythings. Um, and there were some funny moments in the kitchen with uh, some interesting concoctions that I came up with and splatters of uh, sauce up the wall and various comments from family members that would walk in and see the, the kind of the nutty professor at work in the middle of the night. Um, but it all distilled down to coming up with the, with the three flavours that we, we have currently. From all that research and making a mess in the kitchen, I was, I was conscious I really wanted to make a product that appealed to as many people as possible and was as healthy as possible. So I wanted to make it vegan friendly, obviously high in plant-based protein, not just cheap sources of protein, and very low in salt and sugar as well, and certainly not manufactured with a load of um, preservatives and stabilizers, which was actually turned out later to be a fairly tricky process to be able to get that done so cleanly, but uh, we did get there in the end. To enable me to turn this from a kitchen pan to an actual product on shelves, I needed to speak with the right people. And uh, through, through my cousin, I was introduced to Nick, who lives fairly locally. And his expertise from the industry and his marketing background just aligned perfectly with my vision and what I wanted to create. So we immediately got each other and what we wanted to, to, uh, to do here and decided to set this thing up and, and give it a go. So there's a lot of uh, brainstorming. There's a lot of, you know, I love the idea immediately, but there's a lot of thinking of how to take something that I love to be commercially viable. Um, so the first thing I did was actually bring on board a brand agency, brand consultancy called um, Southpaw Communications, who I'd worked with in the past and just felt they were the right company to help brainstorm how you take an idea, a disruptive idea, uh, which has got no grounding and take it to kind of uh, an identity that people can resonate with. So um, there's a fair few years building that up and, and actually product development alongside that as well, um, to the point that we wanted everything we did to be disruptive, both the branding and the product itself. My background is really, I'm ex-consumer marketing, so started with the big blue chips, the big uh, Diageos of the world, um, and then moved around to tech, uh, to sport, to entertainment. 
um, but always brand uh, building uh, in innovation teams and stuff. So I've always been very close to it. I've come from a very entrepreneurial background. My father was in food. So I've always had that kind of uh, desire to, to do to do my own thing or my thing with Henry. Um, and that's kind of what's really driven us to where we got to today. When Henry and I did uh, our initial kind of product development, <clears throat> we found a lot of bumps. You know, uh, it, protein itself is a natural emulsifier. So it doesn't want to do what we wanted it to do in the bottle. We also agreed we didn't want any compromises. So we knew it was going to be hard work. We got told often it wouldn't happen. We worked with people that actually, after working considerably with us, kind of stopped working with us. Um, and after a good couple of years of working on that, we refined it, tested it, and got to a place where it did work for shelf life and flavor and consistency and everything else. So it's taken a long time working with many specialists. This wasn't just born from our own uh, trial. This is done with you know, some very clever minds, and um, it's taken us a long time to get here. We kindly got uh, an exclusive with the grocer when we launched to tell them the story that we had arrived with a big bang. Uh, we got some really good kudos with some trade marketing uh, write-ups as well. So we thought, great, we're onto something. But where do you start? Which market channels? Were, uh, sorry, which sales channels were we after uh, initially? Uh, the plan was to go after independence, pick off a few kind of national distributors to help us with that, um, and that worked pretty well for us. But um, I always felt the, the product offering we had was scalable. And because we had something so unique, we wanted to get to market first. Um, and often people say first to market necessarily isn't the, you know, the, the, the winner um, at the end, but we just felt, you know, regardless of that challenge, we wanted to take the opportunity up. So we started with, um, as I say, independence very much us out on the road doing the you know door to door selling, um, but as I said, being a scalable product, retail was definitely the way to go. Um, and then I suppose in the year two, I focused less on going into the you know the independence and spending a long time trying to build the relationships with some key retailers, which after you know finding the the cycle of en entry and negotiating with them, we landed on some key partners that have been fantastic to date with us, very supportive. Uh, they get what we're after, they get the idea that we can offer something very different, healthy alternative to what's out there, and offering a premium kind of value add to their consumer base. So what's next for us is really uh, to leverage where we are now. We, um, we, we're in market, we've got some you know, key customers, uh, got some really good traffic on social media. Um, but like most startup brands, you need money to keep the wheels turning. Uh, we're a lean business, uh, we've got loads of big growth plans. Um, but we are looking to you know, support our trade marketing. It's really about awareness. You know, our, we're coming from a low base, so we need to um, amplify what we're doing to the, to the masses. Um, so yeah, we are currently fundraising. Uh, we're looking at all sorts of investment opportunities to really just help aid our growth plans, which we hope to achieve this year and beyond.